What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom, welcome to TechStream and today we're taking a look at the cable from Thermaltake. First of all, roll on the intro. So as I said, we are taking a look at a cable from Thermaltake. Okay, technically it's not a cable. What we're taking a look at here is the Thermaltake Premium PCIe 3.0 extender. It is a PCIe riser cable, effectively. I've actually been using this for a while in one of my systems, but we're gonna unbox it, take a look at what comes inside, and see what it'll actually do. This does just come in some plain packaging. It is, at the end of the day, just a PCIe riser cable. But, he says we'll get in. We will get into it and have a look and see what it's got. Now, what we have here is the 300 millimeter version, or 11.8 inches, but yeah, it's a 300 mil version. Comes in a nice anti-static bag. And that's our cable. Right, it's well built. Like I say, I have been using it for a while. This little bit of protection over the end here has been a bit ruffled up, being fed in and out of holes and things, but on the whole, it's it's a riser cable, guys. Comes with a little, sleeve over one end, one end goes into your motherboard, the other end screws, screw attachments to your case, graphics card goes in or whatever you can actually, you don't have to use these for graphics cards, any PCIe item could go in, you could put a RAID card should you want to, a sound card, don't know, anything like that, lock the tab in place, job done. Is it that simple? No, okay, Thermaltake have gone out of their way to basically make the best one possible. Okay, we've got, compared to many others, the cables have been split up for the shielding. Okay, this means that there should be no crosstalk between different channels and different lanes on the cards. They have put extra reinforcing across the top here just to make sure that the cable doesn't come detached from the PCBs. That's been done on both ends. There's a nice bit of support. Everything's nicely done. They've done everything they can to try and make these as durable as possible. There's been a lot of problems in the past with people who have basically bought cheap versions and they've died. They've stopped working. They've had basically, basically these things, they either work or they don't. They don't really kind of work. They, they can do, but on the whole, they just either work or they don't. So what Thermaltake have done is they've done everything they can to make sure that this will do everything you need it to do. I've actually got a cheaper option in my drawer, so I'll grab that now and we can have a quick look at it. So here we have one guys, this is a much cheaper option from another company and as you can see, again I have used this a little bit, but it's, you can feel it, it's not made anywhere near as well. It's, although it is shielded, it's very rough, it's very, it's not, it's, you can tell, it's just not as well made. There's no real support on the ends. Okay, there's these little plastic clamps, but there's nothing to really support the cabling. These just, these support the actual connections, but there's nothing to support the cabling like you've got on this thermal tape job. As you can see, again, single cable, not split. It's also nowhere near as wide. So basically what they've done here, they've basically taken what looks to me like an old fashioned IDE cable and put some PCBs on the end. But hey, we're not reviewing that. We're reviewing the thermal tape one. Now, one thing everybody's always asked, does it affect performance? So, I did some tests. Let's bring up some benchmark graphs and see. So the benchmark graphs show it all, guys. Cinebench scores, error of margin difference. One or two points in difference, error of margin. We did some valley benchmarks, and again, we got the same result. Valley scores, again, error of margin differences. Now, of course, this was only done with a GTX 970, which is the personal rig out of my system, which doesn't really utilize the full bandwidth, but hey, it still just shows that they don't really make any performance difference if you buy a good quality cable. A good quality cable like this will last you. You can use this in many systems if you buy another case that uses it, but, there we go guys, that's about it for the thermal take kit PCIe riser cable. There's not a massive amount I can say about it. All I can tell you is it is a good quality option. The only little bugbear of mine about it is the blue PCBs. I'd like to have seen black ones. A bit more neutral, 
It just means, I mean, they don't really, you don't, can't really see them, but I'm picky. If I was to pick anything with this, it is the blue PCBs. Okay, they're not cheap, but if you're going and spending the money on a case that requires something like this, to be honest with you, buying this isn't the end of the world. If you're going to, sp going to spend maybe 200, 250 pounds on a decent case, the extra 50, 60 pound on one of these cables is nothing. So there we go, guys. That is the Thermal Take TT Premium riser cable. It's a massive thumbs up from me here at TechStream on this cable. Let me know what you think of riser cables and their use in vertical GPUs or even other options that you've seen. Let me know down below in the comments section. If you've liked my video, as always, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Comments below in the section. I always take my time to answer any questions or take on any advice. And don't forget, click that subscribe button. If you want to see more videos from me, click that subscribe button and there will be more videos coming every single week, every Saturday, 6 p.m. There will be a video. It doesn't matter how big or small, I will get you guys a video. So there we go. And on that note, bye for now.